Hi Virgo, how are you? Welcome to your October 2017 reading. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited about this Jupiter transit moving into Scorpio on October 10th. It's going to be sitting there for about a year. Um, it's an exciting transit for you because it happens in your third house, house of communication and you know education, knowledge, um, and you know small social circles and siblings and all these types of things. And when we have the intensity of Scorpio and the high-mindedness of Jupiter coming into this aspect, you know, it's, it lends itself for you to really dig in deep, to become more knowledgeable about something, um, you know, and to be a highly effective communicator. Some of you may even find yourself wanting to talk to people, wanting to become like a teacher or an advisor or a counselor of some kind and and doing so with obviously best interest at heart but doing so with a lot of accuracy and a lot of intuitive drive behind it so not only will you have the keen sensibility there's that gemini mercury plus your mercury your virgo mercury right the the quick and a lot of knowledge retention picking up on information very very quickly connecting the dots and the digging deep and the dissecting of virgo amplified by the really digging deep and the determination of Scorpio. So if there is something that you want to learn or that you want to accomplish in this in this this year, now is a really effective time for you to do it. And it will align, hopefully, it's something that will align with a greater or overall purpose in your life. Um, it's not a transit that's, you know, should be taken lightly. It's a transit that we should try to kind of utilize and maximize to the best of our efforts. Some of you may be, you know, traveling as well, likely short distances, but you've got, you know, a mixture. Maybe there's a mixture in there for you, foreign countries or just kind of, you know, Las Vegas to LA or New York to Boston kind of, kind of transits or uh, travel. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with that. Just a quick note there. I'm going to put the camera down and we'll get started with the cards. Thanks. Hi Virgo, welcome to your reading. Thanks so much for coming. So let's go ahead and get started. I've been shuffling already and getting the deck prepared. So to begin, the Hermit. Well, the card of Virgo for Virgo, first one out. So look, what have you guys been going through? You know, have you guys been going through a major readjustment phase of your life? Have you guys been really trying to get in tune with with this person that you are becoming, refamiliarizing yourself with all the changes that you, because look, guys, we all got hit really hard this year, retrograde after retrograde, sometimes four or five planets at a time, one after that, it's like boom, boom, boom. And you can't go through cosmic events like that and not become a different person. And when you are hit that hard, everybody, and we're all changing, you know, it, it requires introspection and be like, whoa, what did I just go through? What was that? Where did all that come from? And that's what a Virgo is so good at. You know, they're so good at seclusion and isolation and retracting from the world for a short period of time and then emerging and ready to just give all their light and all their newfound knowledge and understanding of what the world is all about. And um, it's a place of where a Virgo can go from, not just from point A to point B, but like from point A to point J, or, you know, like it really like skips. And it's kind of like a fast forward motion in terms of personal development and spiritual development. And it's, it's one of the things that makes a Virgo feel safe and makes them feel like they're alive. Like I think a Virgo comes alive during a hermit phase and like me being a Virgo in a hermit phase, like, like myself, like, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely an experience and it's definitely something that is needed at, at times, especially after a year like this one, it's needed, you know. Okay. 
the Hierophant. Solidification of standards, solidification of your quote unquote covenant to your soul. Look, um, you know, we all hear about the light inside of us, and that light inside is our soul. And in order to attain this physical body, to have this physical 3D experience, we've made a promise to our soul that we would come in and we would engage in this world in the way that so that we learn the lessons that we are meant to learn and in order to do that we need to remain intact okay and and to remember that this lifetime is a journey and a lesson and we're here to learn about relationships, to learn about other people, to learn about pain and to learn about happiness and goodness and wealth and strife and all these things and to embrace those things, the good and the bad. And the hermit is that place where you can say, look, this bad thing is a part of who I am and to not try to change it, but to wrap your arms around it and accept it. And when you accept the good and the bad, and you don't try to change it, weirdly you undergo transformation. And I think that's kind of what this is um, really trying to say, is the acceptance of the good and the bad, and to truly love who you are, and to truly love what it is you are becoming. And those negative experiences that you've had are as critical to your purpose in this world as the good ones and the neutral, boring, mundane ones. You know, just as important. They're all equal. And the Two of Cups. And here's the Lord of Love. And the Dolphin, the power of creation. Look, it is through the Hierophant and the, the Hermit. These are vehicles. Right? These are the chariots that you get into in order to attain the goals that you set for yourself. Love, connection, soulmates. Does it get more beautiful than that? Through a period of isolation, you reignite or you establish or you find that person that admires you as much as you admire them. And I think there's something there for you. And if you're not interested in romance, you know, it's the connection with your purpose in life, the connection with a job that's in line with what it is you feel like you're actually contributing to the world. You're actually doing something good, finding happiness in whatever area that you feel you want happiness, fulfillment, and joy. Love is not always romantic love. Love is love of life. You know, love is what is holding us all together and feeling truly connected to that in a very powerful way. You may be feeling very determined for love. Look, oh look, nine of pentacles, it's so weird. It's like through your isolation, because this is a card of like being single, it's a card of being self-assured, of, of really knowing your value, your self-worth, and independent from anybody else. You know, this is just you. Just you, just you, just you. Now this can represent your institutions, right? So if you're in a marriage or something like that, it, I, I feel that it is through your self-respect and your self-love that your bond becomes that much more intense. Because when you have a sense of self-love and a sense of, of like self-established, you then begin to have more compassion for others' insecurities. You have more compassion for their soul's journey. And when you recognize that you are on your own journey and they're on their own journey, somehow the little things that annoy you and bug you and that kind of drive you up the wall, they all just tend to become less significant. And it creates an environment of vulnerability and an environment of peace in many areas of life. And peace is ultimately the goal, right? I think happiness and sadness, those are the extremes. 
but it's that Zen place, that place of just balanced that is the ultimate goal. Um, wow, like this is a great reading for you guys. And the Princess of Swords. So this can speak twofold. So let me speak to it each way. One, it could actually be a person, an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Someone that has an interest in you, who's curious about you. Um, maybe someone new, okay? So there could be a new established thing. Now, it could also represent your curiosity as well. Um, because of this Jupiter transit into uh, your third house, like I was saying in the intro, this is the Gemini energy kind of coming out here. And, and you, maybe there is a social element, but there's also that genuine curiosity about who people are and really digging deep with that Scorpio quality of let me know, like tell me who you are. I want to know about your soul. I want to know about what makes you tick. And, you know, because of that intensity, I think that you're quote unquote destined to develop or to reestablish a much more like much higher quality relationships not just the superficial ones that probably drive you crazy like virgo doesn't really engage in superficial relationships anyway um and i think that you're going to be finding something very deep your natural curiosity this year about the human psyche, about the human spirit, and about your own self, because this is a continual process, learn, continually learning about yourself and who you're evolving into, um, that makes you potent, let's say that. And the moon. Look at all these like really big ones. You know, the moon, the hermit, the hierophant. The moon is again so, it's the ethereal vibe, that energy that interconnects us all. It's almost as though you're becoming this person that people are just weirdly drawn to and they don't quite have an explanation as to why and it's almost as though you're getting in tune with your because this is the moon card of pisces ruled by neptune and we talk about neptune it's the dis dissolving of boundaries and you know living in that subconscious imaginative world and can also lend itself to like telepathic qualities and just being in tune with the energy of the room. You know, you walk into a restaurant and sometimes you're like, oh, like I'm feeling something. Someone in this room is really going through something really dark and intense and just being that type of a person. Uh, because the Jupiter in Scorpio, I think a lot of people are tuning into that too. So we're all weirdly operating in this ethereal realm but you seem to be the one that's able to express that with the third house placement, you know, and, and you being the one that truly comes to an understanding of what this means uh, and how to use it to actually help how you can be of service in the world, how you can make your relationships better, how you can connect with new romantic partners in a very deep and meaningful way. And it's one of those things where that compassion and true empathy are intensified and kind of like even electrified a little bit as well. And now we have the card of strength, fortitude, um, willpower and patience because of your hermit zone because of what experiences you've had this year and your acceptance of of who you are whether you're single being like okay yes I'm single and I'm like that's great or being in a relationship being like yes I'm an individual autonomous person in this relationship and that's also great you know 
Um, but strength comes in with that control factor, you know, a little bit of the control over the physical world. And there seems to be a stark contrast between the ethereal realm and the physical realm here. Because the lion in the strength card represents the physical world and controlling it with the mind and the ability to transmute situations or how we perceive situations into something happier and more positive and something that we can use or acquire to make ourselves more powerful and um this is a weird reading for you guys i hope that it re resonates in some way you know in all the other signs I think almost all of them, there was an earth sign and there was something inside of me that was like, this is Virgo that, you know, that has something to say, has something they want to contribute, has some like piece of wisdom and piece of advice that they really want to give to someone. And it's like this like sharp cutting insight. And I think you're going to be talkative this month, you know, and you're going to be expressive because of what you've come to know and what you've come to understand and even though you could be highly opinionated it's not as though those opinions are without substance in fact quite the opposite they're highly valuable opinions and you might kind of come up a little bit of a clash this month where people aren't really like taking what you have to offer but you're like, no, I'm, I'm so like, I know I'm right. And I know that I can help you. And I know, you know, the thing is, is that because we are all on our own journey, you can't force your own journey onto someone else. You have to just kind of accept that they are doing their own thing, no matter how right you are, they just have to come to that understanding on their own. And I don't know why I really was sensing that Virgo was kind of the the pinnacle one, maybe just because all the, the signs are just kind of leaving your sign and moving into Libra and all of that. So you're on that solar return high and you just got that battery recharge and you just, you do, you have so much to offer and you have so much to give. And, uh, and I think in some weird way, you're feeling more in control of yourself and when you feel more in control of yourself you feel more in control in relationships not necessarily controlling your partner but you know where you don't experience the extreme so much or, or the emotional stuff doesn't seem so bad you know and it can again peace i'm feeling like you're on the pathway toward a peaceful place if you're not already there and, and you created that right? You're the one that stood above the lion and with your mind told the lion what to do, told the world how to behave around you. You demanded this of the world. You demanded the good things in your life to come into your life. And I think you're realizing the power of intention and the power of motivation. And because you've come to this intrinsic understanding, you're like, ah, oh, I think everyone can do this. And so you are trying to get them to do this. And like I said, you, you can't tell people what to do. You can't force that on them. They just have to figure it out. And now we have the King of Swords. Have you guys been dealing with an Aquarius? I feel like you guys have been. I feel like this has been a recurring theme. An Aquarian, someone who is doesn't have to be Aquarius, can be anybody, but someone's very idealistic, you know, someone that has a, a big mind and, and like, oh, let's, let's give up, you know, and dedicate our lives to make this world a better place, but could also be someone that very much identifies or creates their own identity based on the world and the groups that they're associated with, right? So if they are into motorcycles, let's say, and they get all into it and they buy the, the clothes and the jackets and they get like the, the boots and they have the three bikes that are, you know, different brands or whatever and they go on the rides and you know and it becomes a part of their identity and they identify with things on the outside 
that's kind of a more immature version of this, you know? And, and someone that, or someone who has an illness, right? And, and they, they identify, they create, they're identified based on that because they belong to this particular group of people. Um, but you, having gone through something that is like, no, I'm figuring out who I am. I'm figuring out the, the I'm discovering the deepest, darkest crevices of my spirit and of my soul. And in some way, some of you, now this is not applicable to everybody because this is not a bad person. This is not someone who is shallow. It's not someone who is superficial, um, but they have a harder time delving deep because they are an air sign. They do not enjoy that process of, of diving in and discovering what makes them pain, feel pain or why that pain is there. You know, like sometimes a king of swords can be a little bit in denial because they don't want to go through that process. It's like they know it's there, but they haven't allowed themselves to feel it. And they can articulate things very well and they can talk about what it is they've gone through but it's the feeling of those things. It's totally different, right? And you may be forceful on them and you may want to try to help them and you may try to show them the way. But, you know, a king of swords, it's a fixed sign. It's someone who's stubborn. It's someone who, like, has been living their way of life for so long and they're not about to change it now and they're certainly not about to change it just because someone else tells them to, right? But let's switch gears here because I don't want to just focus on the negative because I do feel that this person is a, a good person on their core. And for some of you, there is true love. For some of you, there is a soulmate quality. And for some of you, there is a longstanding relationship ahead of you. But a Virgo aquarian mix and i know i talked about this last month <laughs> so some of you really are dealing with with uh an emotionally seemingly unavailable person not always but they approach love from a very different place they approach love from a place of friendship and compatibility and you know they're they're really someone that really just wants to the knight of cups they're really someone that wants to establish that, that base and they can be very slow moving in love and it can be like really, oh, like really harsh sometimes for a Virgo because they feel like what it is they have to give this person doesn't want but it's quite the contrary it's just a very different approach to love so it can be tested it can be a difficult place you know um but now we have the knight of cups coming out and we've got the seven of cups as well knight of cups i wonder if this is you mm, virgo you reaching out like i said i think virgo is the one all earth signs, yes, but Virgo very specifically being the one to reach out to people, that Gemini influence, like I said, the third house ruled by Gemini, you've got the Scorpio Jupiter there. So it's like you're having this desire to talk, this desire to reach out, to be social, this desire to feel connected to other people and you know, engage in your networks and things like that. So you're coming out of your hole, your hermit cave, whatever you wanna call it. And, and here you are, and, and maybe you do really wanna to talk to this person. Maybe this is the kind of an unrequited love and someone that you've um, maybe never had a relationship with or someone you went through a difficult relationship with, whatever it is. Someone that's in your life though, because of king of a king of whatever, is usually someone that's in your life, okay? And there seems to be confusion around maybe the, the status, maybe some confusion around stuff, maybe some confusion, maybe some of you are seeking closure, I don't know, maybe some of you are seeking an apology, um, or maybe some of you are seeking a relationship 
and yet it's very fuzzy the way things are right now. It's confusing. It's a little bit, like I said, up in the air. It's up in the air. And maybe you're even having a hard time trying to like be like, I don't really know how to feel about this person. I don't really know. And maybe that's been a big part of the hermit. Maybe this person was the catalyst that put you in this hermit mode, you know, for some of you. Um, and you're, you're just like, I love this person, but maybe I don't really know why. Maybe I don't really have a strong enough foundation or a strong enough base to make up my mind whether I actually love them or not. You know, I don't know what it is, but um, this person is, is harsh. It's a harsh energy for Virgo. And it can be, oh, like it just mm, kind of just sits wrong sometimes. You two are connected. Look, let's say that. There's a spiritual realm connection here for sure. For sure. Maybe you're dreaming about each other. Maybe you are having images of them kind of popping into your mind. There may be a little bit of a telepathic thing going on. You know that, oh, I was just picking up the phone to call you and I got a text from you kind of thing and six of pentacles there's an element of balance and an element of generosity this is the the lord of material success so it does speak to success and victory okay but sometimes it can also represent out of balance things where you are the one that gives more and it's usually a a, a hyper uh, sent, because you're hypersensitive to this person. This person is your Achilles heel, maybe. And, and you're hypersensitive to them and you really genuinely care. Um, there could be a more like a, a sense of being a parent, right? Being feeling like a mother or a father to this person in terms of how you care about them. There's an element of unconditional love there. And I say more maternal because this card is ruled by the moon and that maternal instinct of like, oh, I got to take care of my baby no matter what. And it can get you into trouble. You know, this person is, is a weakness and they, they do kind of bring that out in you. But there's it's not without merit. You know, the two of cups being the kind of crowning card here. The soulmates, the water kind of running down and sprinkling down on both of you here. You know. Whoa, okay, I can't take all of these, but I will take the ones that turned up. Um, I probably won't speak too much about them, but we got the Blasted Tower. So change is imminent. I don't know which direction. It's gonna be different for all of you. Towards someone or away from someone. Maybe a harsh conversation needs to be had because if this really is someone that is just like, Oh, like really just gets to you. It's, you know, you've been trying to get them out of your life for a while. So maybe you finally do, or maybe for some of you, there is an opportunity for them to turn around and to really, um, yeah, justice, king of pentacles and the ace of cups. So maybe there is an opportunity for new love or an opportunity for you to start fresh with or without this person. Balance is eminent with the the justice card. And look, this Taurus, card of Taurus, king of swords, fixed signs. And I know that it doesn't have to be, but I think this king is the same person um, because it's coming out as a king. And even though this is like, you're a pentacle card, I, I don't really know. I think that this is actually really them and I think they're actually quite stubborn and, and they don't quite have a desire to change who they are or to kind of bend or mold really but you know let's leave that out for a second and talk about justice the thing with justice is you have to have faith that whatever is meant to be will be and that this tower will come in and it will be necessary so whether it's really hard or just kind of hard is irrelevant it's just what's needed to get you back on track for the scales to be even 
you've got the balance between Saturn and the and Venus Saturn being the the ruler of limits and restrictions and time and Venus being love and beauty maybe it's time you know the time is is coming or the time is here for a love to form or for you to stop caring I think caring is kind of getting you in trouble. Virgo is a very caring sign when someone is important to them. You know, when someone cares about them, they're the most giving in the world. But, and it's rare when someone gets under your skin like this. It's rare when someone affects you this way. And when, when they do, it's potent, you know, and, um, it's also not really someone that you can tell tell them what to do. That's kind of a hard thing there. They just gotta come up with it on their own. I think you're this Knight of Cups. You're the one that's kind of got your heart on your sleeve this month. Like I said, there's a, a culture of vulnerability here um, and it's, uh, I'm wondering if there hasn't been vulnerability for a while there hasn't been true honesty there hasn't been good communication and now because of this hermit you're like i just i just have to be authentic to who i am and say what i'm feeling and if it's unrequited then fine then i don't you know but i have to be true to who i am because that is the only way that i will find real love is by being honest about my my true character and being honest about my intentions and my true motivations you know that type of thing um, but balance will come so whatever the outcome is please know that that's just what is meant to be justice the lord of truth you know it can be harsh at times but it can be but it's fair harsh but fair okay so I'm going to leave you with that, Virgo, kind of an intense reading for you, but I hope that it spoke to you in some way. I really wish you nothing but the best. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Bye.